Hi, I'm Steve Borey, and I am the author of the American Casino Guidebook. If you're not familiar with it, please take a, a few minutes and visit our website at AmericanCasinoGuidebook.com. Joining me today is the editor of the American Casino Guidebook, Matt Borey. How's it going, everybody? And uh, with us today, we have the uh, owner of BlackjackApprenticeship.com, Colin Jones. And uh, we're going to do a video today on five betting strategies you should avoid in blackjack. Colin Jones, um, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Uh, well, we're doing okay now. Uh, for people who aren't familiar with you, uh, can you give us a little, because you and I and, and Matt, we've all done uh, videos in the past about blackjack and your area of mm -hmm. expertise is, is blackjack card counting. You have a course that teaches people. And I think initially we did one uh, when you were in a, you were the subject of a movie a few years ago about Christian card counters. So can you give people just a quick background on you? Sure. Uh, I got into card counting about 18 years ago um, and uh, did that for a living for a number of years. And then me and some friends went on to run a blackjack team that beat casinos for a little over $3 million. And that was called the church team. And it was featured in a documentary called Holy Rollers, the true story of card counting Christians. And uh, somewhere about 12 years ago, uh, me and a couple friends started blackjack apprenticeship to teach others card counting. And now I'm the sole owner of it, and that's that's what I do. Now, if right. anybody wanted to watch that movie, is it available on any uh, streaming services or anything like that? Yeah, I think it's on uh, Amazon Prime, I believe. Oh, okay. All right, well, what we wanted to uh, talk about today, you, you came up with a, a good topic because people try different kinds of uh, betting strategies all the time for, for blackjack. And the topic today is five blackjack betting strategies to avoid. These are ones that, that you shouldn't do. So let's start our way down the list. And, and what's uh, number one here? Sure. Well, I actually, I'm going to do it in reverse order. I'm going to start with number uh, five and okay. work down to number one. But uh, number five is the few hundred bucks a day strategy. So I get, I hear this all the time. People email me or, or say, you know what, I'm not trying to, Get greedy. I just want to win, you know, a few hundred bucks a day at blackjack. And the, the problem with that strategy is let's say you just want to win three bets in a day. Well, that's actually over 75% chance that you will be up three bets in a day of blackjack if you're just playing perfect basic strategy. But to try to do that the next day and the next day, it actually means after two days, you're trying to be up six bets. And after three days, you're trying to be up nine bets. And after a month, you're trying to be up 90 bets. And that's just not mathematically very, very feasible. And the, the thought is, well, tomorrow's a new day. I just have to win three bets. But that's not how the odds work. The odds don't reset each day in the casino. And the odds of being up 90 units in 30 days is really the same as being up 90 units in, in any of num number of days. And it's about a one in 3,000 chance of being up every day for 30 consecutive days. So the bottom line is the odds don't reset you're not going to beat blackjack by just trying to win a few bets every single day. It's, it yeah. sounds similar to that uh, uh, a slot machine strategy where, where they say, oh, well, it's easy. Just when you're up, you cash out, and, and, and that's how you become a, a winner at slots, but it's not an easy thing to do. No, the, the, the math is stacked against you. The more you play, the more likely the casino is going to you know, get the, the edge that they have against you. Mm hmm yeah, it sounds it sounds very easy when you just say, "Oh, I just want to win three bets and then go home." But uh, when, once you uh, describe it that way, it sounds uh, much harder, which is what people should uh, really understand before they try and go do that. All right, what's number four on your list? Sure. So number four is progressive betting, and there are all sorts of progressive betting systems. There's negative progressions, positive progressions, martingale, and there's actually three main reasons this doesn't work. The first is you are going to be capped by the table limits. So the idea with a progressive bet is let's say you lose a hand. Well, you just double what you bet before to win it back. And if you lose that, you double it again. And you keep doing that until you win whatever you've lost, maybe plus $5 or something like that. But if you're playing, let's say a five to $500 table, you can really only double your bet seven times. You might think, well, how often do you lose seven hands in a row? It's actually every few hours, you're going to lose seven hands in a row. Uh, so even if you find somewhere with, you know, really large table limits, like $5 to $2,000 limits, 
Well, you can only double your bets 12 times by the time you're capped by that $2,000. And you could say, well, how often do you lose 12 times in a row? It's really once every seven hours is the odds of it. So that's the first problem is, is you're not going to be able to keep doing this progressive long enough. And secondly, even if you're not worried about being capped by the table limits, every seven hours to, to try to win $5, you're going to be in $20,000 of money. And most people don't have the bankroll for that. And even if you do have the bankroll for it and you've got infinite table limits, the odds are still against you. And people think it's a 50-50 game, but if you're just using basic strategy or God forbid, worse than basic strategy, then the casino has an advantage against you. And that advantage is going to add up over time. And there's nothing you can really do to overcome that with a progressive betting system. Yeah, we tell people that all the time, that uh, progressive betting system, it doesn't matter what you bet, it's not going to change the odds on the game. It's just going to make it more volatile. It's really just going to increase your chances that you're going to lose a lot more money. Yeah. And now, now, what are your thoughts, though? Because you, you're, t- you're talking about a progressive betting system where you're doubling after every bet. Well, let's say you, you bet uh, uh, <clears throat> $50. You win, you bet. You don't double it to 100 You bet it's 75 If you win that, you don't go to 150 You go to 100 uh, yeah. it's, it's a lower bet, uh, type of progression betting system. Uh, what about that one? Yeah, the, the bottom line is anything like that. You're, you're, for it to work, you have to win more hands than you lose. Mm-hmm. And the math of the game is that you're not going to win more hands than you lose unless you're using something that gains the advantage, that changes the house odds, which is what Card King does, mm-hmm. uh, or another form of advantage play. But a progressive system is not giving you the advantage. It's just trying to make up for losses. But when the odds are stacked against you, you can't make up those losses uh, more than you can't win more hands than you're going to lose. Well, yeah, you I, said I, in your example uh-huh. that uh, you can only with the five to 500, you can only double your bet seven times. And uh, anybody who's played blackjack, uh, who's spent <laughs> any amount of time at the blackjack table knows it's very easy to lose seven hands in a row. I, I, that happens all the time. Even when you have an advantage on the, over the casino. Like that's the one thing that people don't understand is even the professionals, you don't always win. And so, yeah, so, absolutely. So realistically, you just want to increase your bets, your progressive bet, make, make a larger bet when you're counting cards and you know there's an advantage in your favor. That's the bottom line. Right. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Is that number three? No, number three is the no bust blackjack strategy. Oh. So, uh, you know, I, I've heard a number of people say, oh, well, well, what I do is if I ever have a hand where I might bust, I just stand. And, and the thought is, if you bust, you have no chance of winning the hand. So why not just stay so you don't bust? But the, the problem with this strategy is when, when the dealer is showing a seven or higher, which is a hand that, you know, basic strategy would say, let's say you got a 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you actually are supposed to hit that. Well, if you stay, the, the odds are that the dealer is going to get an average of an 18.4 if they have a seven or higher. So the odds are the dealer is going to have an 18 or better. When you stand, you're costing yourself an incredible amount of money in, in hopes that they might actually bust. And, and I've run the numbers on this. You can run this with simulation software. And the actual odds of it is you're going to lose eight times more money playing this no bust strategy than if you just follow basic strategy. So to kind of put that in real numbers, if you sit at a blackjack table and just play basic strategy, betting $10 every hand, you're going to lose about $5 an hour uh, on average. Well, if you do this no bust strategy, you're going to lose more like $40 an hour. So eight times more money following this no bust strategy. So it's, it's a really bad one. I think they might have picked that one up from the Austin Powers movie when he's playing blackjack. Yeah, right. he, has, he has a 12 and he stands. I too like to live dangerously. <laughs> yes, that's living very dangerously at the blackjack table. Well, well let, me, let me ask you one thing on here because you said that the average dealer hand is uh, winning hand is 18.4. So does that mean if you were to go to a casino and they dealt you 18 every single time in the long run, you're a loser? Uh, no. Well, yeah. If if you were dealt 18s every hand when a dealer Mm -hmm. had, uh, you would lose at blackjack. Uh, but that doesn't mean you should hit an 18 because, uh, you are very highly likely to bust if you, if you hit an 18, Uh, Mm um, you know, follow basic strategy is, is the best advice I can give a gambler, um, is just to follow basic strategy because it really has worked out the odds of every hand. And of course there's those times where, 
you know, you do things just right and you still lose. But uh, some of these decisions, you're losing less by following basic strategy than if you don't. Right. We, we tell people the same thing. Oh, okay. What are we on for number two? Okay. Number two, this is mathematically the, the worst system <laughs> I've ever analyzed. And this is called play like the dealer. So some people say, well, a dealer, you know, hits 16 and below and then stands 17 and above. And they do that for a reason. So the player should do the same thing. But, but this one is really expensive. Uh, and, and the reason why is that a basic strategy player, you know, actually should stand on let's say a 12 through 16 when the dealer has a three through six, because that's a time when a dealer is more likely to bust. And so, you know, the, the dealer has to play a certain way. We have to play a different way to minimize the casino's house edge. It, you're missing out on double downs, which are situations where the player actually has the advantage. And basically the bottom line of it is this is about 10 to 12 times worse than basic strategy you're going to lose money 10 to 12 times faster playing like the dealer as opposed to basic strategy. So again, if you're playing $10 a hand, you'd lose about $5 an hour on average with basic strategy. You're going to lose a hundred to $120 an hour betting $10 a hand and following this, uh, you know, play like the dealer strategy. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. Again, the, the problem is that both the player and the dealer lose when you both bust because we go first. And so since, since we go first, there are situations where we say, hey, if we're both gonna bust, we need to stay. Now don't go to the no bust strategy because there are other times where we have to hit to try to even have a chance. But because both the player and the dealer bust, uh, when both the player and the dealer bust, the player loses, we need to follow basic strategy to minimize our losses. So it sounds like the uh, you have at one end of the spectrum, you have the no bust strategy. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you have the uh, play like the dealer. And yeah. then right there in the middle somewhere is where we have the uh, basic strategy, which is where mm -hmm. you should be playing. Yes. All right. And then what is your number one worst betting strategy for blackjack players? Well, I don't know if I'd say this is the, the worst. I think that play like the dealer is probably the worst, but this one is kind of near and dear to my heart because I train people at card counting. And so this one's painful for me. And I call, it, call this the follow your heart card counting strategy. And so for every perfect card counter who's going to make money at blackjack, there's a hundred card counters that know enough to think that they're going to win, but they're not going to. So this could be like they see a bunch of small cards coming out. So they raise their bet. Uh, not opposed to actually knowing the count and knowing when to raise their bet, but just, hey, some cards came out. Um, this could also be that you're not 100% perfect at your playing decisions or at your betting decisions or anything like that. But the, all these card counters, they're, they're just going to lose money. Um, and, and you're better off just playing basic strategy than, than to try to, you know, kind of do a halfway in between strategy as a card counter. Your bankroll management is going to be terrible. So if you really want to beat the game of blackjack, uh, the way that we've done it, the way we've trained our teams, you know, to win millions, the way that we've trained people through blackjack apprenticeship to win millions of card counting is with perfect card counting, not 95% perfect, but 100% perfect card counting. Hmm. So you actually have card counters that would, would sometimes uh, just, Play, play on the hunches like that because they saw that they're not disciplined enough to follow the proper strategies. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. There, uh -huh. there's there's lots of that, and maybe it's that they're uh, chasing their money because they've been losing, and so they just start over betting, or maybe it's that they're under betting because they're afraid of getting kicked out of the casino. And if, if you're doing anything like that, you're you're not going to make it as a card counter. But I'd say, you know, of of every hundred card counter card counters out there in the world, only one of them is a perfect winning player. But if it weren't for those 99 card counters that think they know what they're doing, it'd be much harder for real card counters to make money. So it's kind of a, it's a blessing in disguise, really, if you think about it. I suppose. It. I would say all these, all these betting strategies are, are good for card counters because, you know, everyone else is kind of funding these casinos that we card counters get to, you know, take a small amount of profit out of. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so you gave us your, your, your five bad uh, blackjack betting strategies, but I want to add one more. Yeah. And this is based on my own personal experience, and I call it the voodoo blackjack betting system, <laughs> where, 
and, and, and this is where, and I'll give you an example, because there are people out there like this. I remember one time I was in this casino, and, and this guy next to me, very, very nice, you know, sociable guy, and, and, and he'd get a 12, and he'd double down. And, and he did it like three or four times during, during the course of an hour. And so, and so finally, I, I, I asked the guy, I said, you know, why are you doubling down on a 12? There, you know, there's about a third of the cards are going to be a 10, and you're going to automatically lose. You're going to immediately lose. Those seem like bad odds. And he says, well, you know, I'm feeling lucky. And, and whenever I feel lucky, that's what I do. So, so sometimes I call this the voodoo blackjack betting system. I also yes. see it with, with, with people who don't know how, they, they never bother to learn basic strategy. So they, they play voodoo blackjack where they sort of guess how they should play their hands. But I, I say that that was like the worst idea that I, I've seen someone betting on, on, on blackjack in probably my whole career. You know, I've seen people doubling a hard 15 before in the casino. Oof. And, Oof. you know, uh, about a third of the time, they don't bust and mm -hmm. they feel like they're awesome. And they say, see, I, I knew it was coming. But uh, no, the, the average blackjack player is playing at about a 2 to 3% disadvantage. A perfect basic strategy player is playing at about a half a percent disadvantage. So, you know, the average player is losing three, four times as much money as someone that would actually follow basic strategy, but they're going to get that positive reinforcement every once in a while when it works out and they're going to feel like, see, I'm smarter than the game. But if yeah, they I, kept their records, if mm -hmm. they actually kept track of their wins and losses over the year, um, it might tell a different story. Uh, I, I think you got that right. Okay. So thanks very much for giving us those tips. And if people want to find out more about you and, and what you do, how can they do that? Sure. You can check out blackjackapprenticeship.com and uh, I have a book. It's the number one blackjack book on Amazon. Uh, we sell it through our website with a bunch of bonuses also like interviews with million dollar card counters. Uh, and we have a video course and training membership that, uh, yeah, videos, training drills, betting software, a forum for members, all that stuff at blackjackapprenticeship.com. Okay, great, Matt. All right. Well, now one thing I just, I just got to add in at the end is a lot of people we, we've done a whole, a dedicated a whole other video to this, but I have to just ask so we cover it here. A lot of people think that blackjack uh, card counting was something you could do back in the 80s and the mm -hmm. 90s, and it's much harder to do today. Uh, do you th is it still possible, and what do you have to say to those people? Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely still possible. Um, there are some things that were better back then, uh, such as you could find some really favorable rules at certain places. But there are some things that are much better now, which is the sheer number of casinos. So, you know, um, I've got no shortage of friends that have made six or even seven figures from card counting in the last five years. Uh, you know, I've got people out there right now making middle six figures from card counting. It's not easy work. You know, you don't just walk into a casino with $100 and walk out with 10000 like some people think it used to be. It never was that way but it's still very doable or else I wouldn't, I wouldn't be running this. I don't, I don't need money badly enough that I would uh, sell something that didn't work. All right. Well, Colin Jones, thank you very much. And uh, if you like the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment below, let us know what you think. And if you uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, click the bell and turn on notifications. So you never miss any of our other great videos. Yeah. Thank you everyone for watching and best wishes for good luck in the casinos.